So ladies and gentlemen, what just happened? I am in drikpanchang.com and I see that Jupiter is now in the sign of Capricorn, 14th September 2021 and uh, he is going to be there and he is going to enter back Aquarius on November 20th. 2021 9:36 pm german time so october november roughly two more months he will be there in capricorn and then he shall uh, enter aquarius again now the question is still when will he stay in aquarius he will again enter pisces another sign on 13th april 2022 so essentially November, December, January, February, March. So not, not many months in Aquarius. <laughs> and then he will enter Aries on 22nd April 2023. Right. So, so this transit uh, is a very short transit. So these there are these two transits. So first of all, there's this transit, which is back into Capricorn. Uh, this is still 20th November this year and then November 20th to April next year is in Aquarius, the, the short one. So it's a very interesting transit because Jupiter had been in Capricorn uh, and then he entered Kumbharashi Aquarius. When did he enter? He entered on 5th of April this year, 2021. And now uh, yesterday today is 15th and yesterday 14th he uh, entered makar rashi again capricorn so we all know that capricorn is the sign of uh, debilitation for jupiter um, but that doesn't mean that uh, this transit is going to be very bad or uh, it doesn't mean that this transit is going to ruin your life or it will end up in a disaster. It doesn't mean that. Well, a lot of interesting things that are actually happening because uh, around 27th of this month, Mercury is also uh, going retrograde again. So therefore, uh, October is going to be a pretty interesting month and Jupiter Saturn will also uh, be roughly going direct by you know, so by end of October you can uh, really get these vibes of direct motion of Jupiter and Capricorn and Mercury will also be direct by then right so therefore this month of October is going to be an interesting time to check on the things that uh, we have been planning from long 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 time so there is something in your life which you know you you want to do it but you're thinking how should you do it or maybe you even know how should you do it but then you you may feel that the the desire to do uh, to accomplish that task is there within you uh, you also have the plan you have the goal you have the plan you have the methods you have everything. You also have the willpower, but uh, somehow, maybe deep down inside, it's happening with me. I don't know with any of you guys. <laughs> you can write it down in the comments if you are facing something similar. So everything is there, uh, but somehow uh, we are not able to do that which we know we should, right? There's something inside. Something is going on. What is that? Well, it's different for everybody, but uh, it's happening with me and with so many other people that we all have the resources, but including the willpower, but uh, it's still not manifesting. I am i don't mean to say externally, but even internally, uh, we are not, uh, we have not yet mastered that level of courage and discipline to actually make those necessary changes in our life, which... Uh, is very which we know that is going to be very essential for our progress in the long run so in my opinion depending on your horoscope uh, this month of october is going to be a very crucial time because 
during October, these uh, retrogressions are happening and uh, like Mercury's retrogression and Jupiter Saturn are going direct. So therefore, and you know, these planets stay stationary for quite some time, right? So mid-October roughly, uh, you can expect that you're really forced to make a decision on whether to continue uh, certain trends in your life, certain pathways rather. <laughs> after observing some trends from the past or uh, should you go and change it so october is the time when you need to make that decision right and why do i say this because now see the thing is jupiter is entering capricorn for the next two months okay so whichever houses jupiter rules in your chart jupiter rules sagittarius and Aquarius, right? <laughs> no, no, Pisces. So, Pisces and Sagittarius, wherever they are falling, depending on your ascendant, not moon sign, your lagna, your rising sign, your ascendant uh, sign, depending on that, you have to see um, if you are feeling a lack of confidence uh, in regards to those houses. So, for example, if Jupiter uh, is your 10th lot, right? Or 11th lot, or uh, second lord or sixth lord now this can bring some inhibition in matters of career it could if he is the seventh lord this could be something related to marriage okay now many times people ask uh, but sir this transit is happening but uh, what will happen in my life right how will how do i know what is going to happen in in my life so for that you need to check which dashas you are running, which Mahadasha you are running, which Antadasha you are running, which Pratyantar you are running. Pratyantar you could still ignore. But the Mahadasha and Antadasha you just cannot ignore because they will, they will exactly tell you what is going on in your life. Now, the thing is, if you are already running Dasha of Jupiter, then... Dasha means either the Mahadasha or the Antadasha. Then uh, it's very likely that this transit could affect you more prominently. Now it depends on if you are running Jupiter's Dasha, it depends on how well is Jupiter placed in your chart. So if suppose Jupiter is well placed in your chart. Now how do you decide if a planet is well placed? Well, that's another topic of discussion in astrology, which I will not go to now because then this video will be very long. But let's assume that from all angles of astrology, Jupiter is quite well placed in your chart. Now you will say, oh, my guru is in cancer. You know, Is it exalted? You know this, you know that, you know, you know, you know, all the you knows you will bring here, you know. But you actually, you know, have to, uh, you know, learn astrology, you know, and you know, actually you have to, you know, uh, you know, understand all the you knows. <laughs> Why I'm saying, you know, because many times people say, you know, my Jupiter is here, you know, it's here, you know, it's there, you know, it's doing this. You know. No, it doesn't work like that. You, There's so many factors which you have to use while judging the strength of a planet, you know. Just one or two you knows is not enough. So you have to see multiple things like which house is easy ruling uh, where is he placed right where is the nakshatra lord of jupiter placed if jupiter is in dhanishta then where is mars right where is the dispositor of jupiter placed i am not talking of saturn because jupiter is currently in um, capricorn and capricorn is lord by saturn i am not saying of transits i am saying look at your own chart okay so to assess every transit of Jupiter, how will it be? You actually have to check uh, how is Jupiter placed in your own birth chart. Then secondly, you have to check which houses uh, is it uh, prominently uh, trying to influence. Like which houses is it lording? Now which, ho which house is it placed? Where? Uh, where where is Jupiter aspecting? Is there any planet which is under the aspect of Jupiter? Okay, how is Guru placed in the D9 chart? Also, as I said, the dispositor and the nakshatra lord is very important. The sign, which sign is it? A friend sign, exaltation, mul trikon, own sign, enemy sign, whatever. 
<laughs> right so and then also you have to uh, you have to check uh, that particular area of life uh, for for a particular area of life you have to check that divisional chart so if you are concerned about career so for example if jupiter is your 10th lord as i say then you also have to check how is jupiter placed in your dashamsha chart right because that's the chart which gives you a broad idea about uh, what could be the basic inspiration for a person to move towards his career and similarly for marriage you have to check uh, the d9 chart it's very important and for childbirth you have to check the saptamsha chart yes so these are very important charts when it comes to prominent area of your life so once you have seen you know you know all the unique factors you really know it's not that you know in youtube right you really know what jupiter is doing and to what extent is it doing right then you have to see how is this transit playing out in context of this current dasha that you are having okay so for example you know if jupiter is indicating your money houses which are the money houses the second house sixth house tenth house eleventh house and he's well placed provided condition number 2 condition he is somehow linked with your money houses and he is well placed which means he is strong then this transit can act for you uh, in a very different way then what could happen is uh this transit could uh, inspire you to maybe leave your job and you know start your own business or do something similar right this this means then then this transit will force you to because he's in debility in transit now this transit will force you to give up those things which are actually uh, which you know deep down inside will uh, not give you happiness in the long run so then leave all this and do something that you like that you are self inspired by but suppose jupiter is linked with your money houses but you know he is not very well placed you know what will happen then then uh, you may face a scenario like for example you you are in a current job or business or you are self employed or you have some sort of earning but uh, you are uh, not feeling very happy about it but because he's not well placed in your chart although he's linked with your money houses you will not be able to make that transition to what you should actually okay so for example if jupiter is in your 10th house but maybe he's not very well placed right uh, and his dasha is going on then in during this transit you may feel that oh there's lack of motivation in the workplace or anything like that right or you jupiter also rules you know the thought process the vision the framework so you might lack uh, the basic framework which you know might be needed to succeed in your career so that is another thing which you might lack okay externally because it's the 10th house you may get a lot of money but then internally the satisfaction would be missing okay and then if you have jupiter linked with the man, uh, marriage houses and is well placed then what could happen is you might be forced to let go of certain patterns within the marriage which you or your spouse is behaving or which is not causing uh, auspiciousness which is not bringing auspiciousness into your marriage which is pulling your marriage down then you will be forced to give up all this okay um or on the other side if he is linked with the uh, houses of marriage and it is badly placed then uh, you might feel a bit disheartened that yes there are so many problems i know but i can't change anything right that sense of helplessness may be there now if your dasha is not related to jupiter which means you are not running jupiter's mahadasha or antardasha then first you must check what jupiter himself is doing in the chart Okay, then you have to see what the dasha lords are doing. Are they indicating marriage or good married life or you no know, bad married life, career or good career, bad career, uh, or what kind of career, right? Externally, what is it indicating? Internally, what is it indicating? And to what extent is it indicating that uh, you will have a good direction, a good vision in life? Okay, so therefore, in short, if the dashas are good, then this transit will force you to let go of certain things which 
is not going to be good for you in the long run and you will give up them and you will make that big leap towards the next level but if your dashas are not good then you know that there are certain things you know will not be good for you but even though you know but you still can't change it you will not be able to make that change okay so if your dashas are not good then you will just sit you can't make the change right is it sounds very pessimistic yeah actually it is but then the thing is how should you rectify this right um you can chant this mantra om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya this is the mantra that you can chant om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya okay this mantra will help you to get the right vision and the right things that you should do okay and if you are facing very much difficulty because of your dashas or your transits or your overall chart especially in the next two months it's very good if you can fast on thursdays and uh, you can also read the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam that will also enlighten you because this is a debilitated transit now so therefore unless the dashas are good or decent or extraordinary um, you may feel that uh, you are not getting that which you should have got okay So therefore please avoid things related to saturn right so for example saturn shows you know comparing yourself with others you know understand that everybody has a different karma right even though somebody is exceeding you it doesn't mean that you will always stay where you are right and even though you may be exceeding somebody it doesn't mean that they are uh, they are not good right or it doesn't mean that you will always exceed <laughs> so therefore if you get success then remain humble that's the uh, trait of saturn and if you do not get success then don't be disheartened right because you may not be successful today tomorrow next month next year or maybe next decade but maybe who knows one day you are successful right so therefore uh, avoid Uh, because this is capricorn so avoid being too self critical of yourself or others avoid doing that right and then you will realize that this transit has taken away things from me which i always knew i could have given up but now it's taken away forcefully so that there is room for new things to come better things to come okay but that will depend on your dashas and most importantly how you use your free will Okay, so therefore, use your free will in the right way. Read the Bhagavad Gita. Read the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Associate with spiritually enlightened beings. Read uh, biographies or autobiographies, or read good books which enlighten you mentally, socially, financially, spiritually, emotionally, <laughs> and then take good inputs. Okay. by that you can actually not only go but grow through this transit all right thank you very much if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to down below and if you like this video please click the thumbs up and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit or your marriage career health relationships childbirth then you can always go to my website down below in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him hopefully no you will thank you